But I want to go back to your calls, please, on this issue that we're talking about now uh, on the Savage Nation. KSFO, Helen, line two, let's make it quick. What's on your mind? Oh, hi there. Well, my call is about Teddy, actually. So um, if you don't mind my saying a few words about Teddy, um, I've been thinking about Teddy a lot because I lost a dog who was very important to me um, in mid-2017, and I've done a lot of soul-searching, and I know some people think I'm a nutcase, but I'm a pretty well-educated nutcase, and I've done a lot of thinking about how this all works. Um, everything you said about souls deciding whether to come back or not makes a lot of sense to me, and I think they also decide who they're going to come back and live with. And I really strongly believe that Teddy chose you. Uh, he chose you for a reason. And uh, dogs, I'm, I have a background in neuroscience, and um, the seat of consciousness mm. is not the cerebral cortex. In fact, the cerebral cortex just gets in the way because it's so busy making plans and lists and playing piano or whatever it is that it does that it mm-hmm. loses touch with the conscious spiritual world. And uh, I think dogs have a special talent. For connecting us to the spiritual well, world. Well, they're, they're, let's say what they are. In, in, in German, they're known as a hunt, a hunter. They're for the hunt. Dogs have been with man since cave times, and, and they were used for protection, but mainly for hunting. You know that. That's their instinct. Now, the breeds that we have today have had the hunting mostly bred out of them, but if you take a dog for a walk, what do they do when they walk? They sniff every bush. They sniff everything they can, if they're males, and they pee on it. Basically, they're still the hunter. They're just always after a scent, aren't they? Uh, that's neither here, that's neither here nor there. I'm talking about instincts. Animals have instincts. So, I believe that dogs are spiritual guides. In that sense, somewhat of a Native American viewpoint, I suspect. I believe you look at Native American movies as popularized in this country. You know, when someone dies, there's always like the shot of the of the bird in the air, right, flying away. Isn't that like a typical Hollywood view? A bird, you know, with the sound, ah, and it's like, okay, there goes the guy's spirit. Well, why do you think the Native Americans wore the costumes of the animals? Why did they put on the costume of the buffalo, the costume of the animal? Well, because they were taking the spirit of the animal into them in order to go out and do what they had to do as men who were both defending their tribe and hunting for their tribe, I suppose. So I think they were certainly in touch with the fact that the animals around them, all of them, the birds, the bear, the deer, the buffalo, the antelope, you name it, all were spiritual in some ways. It's not to equate them with human beings. I'm not doing that. But um, I, I agree. I think that's what you're saying, aren't you? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm thinking that our we think that our brain, because it's so complex and talented, gets us closer to God, but I actually think it takes us away from God, because we're so busy dealing with the 3D world. And we're very good. We have dominion over, the just like the Bible says, right? We have dominion over the 3D world and all the animals in it. But we lose our touch with spirituality, you know, also. That's a cost. That's the cost that we have for being that way. And that's where the animals, I think, have a more direct connection. And probably... I think that that's a very articulate statement that you made, and I want to thank you. You know, Helen... I'll tell you what, I'm going to send you a copy of Teddy and me today in his honor. Everyone that gets on, you know, till we can stop the topic. Stay on the line, we'll send you Teddy and me, okay? That's a beautiful thing to do. And the pictures are so good, they're unbelievable.